It's the greatest gift from Allah to be in the last prophet. Summa salatullah wa salamullah ala al-hadi al-rasulillah. It's the greatest gift from Allah to be in the last prophet. Summa salatullah wa salamullah. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. That successful indeed is the one who purifies this nafs. You are fear for Allah, but you also fear other people? No. Don't fear anybody else, illa Allah, except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is telling us, good words are better. Good words, words of advice, is better than the one who gives charity, but followed by reproach. So there are different levels of tests, and Allah decides who He's going to test. The first level of testing, of course, is with our own nafs. By his companions that Allah had mentioned, the noble description in the Holy Quran. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, he has taken who and has taken fear who and I would be lay him in Shururi and Fusina. Women say, Yati Amalina, my Yahdilla who fell a mudilla, women youth lil fell a hadiella. When I shed one la ilaha illa law, when I shed one Muhammad and Abduh or Rasul, Amma Ba. فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا تداينتم بدين إلى أجل مسمى فاكتبوا وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أيضا وَاسْتَشْهِدُوا شَهِيدَيْنِ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُونَا رَجُلَيْنِ فَرَجُلًا وَمْرَأَتَانِ وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث على يدي ما أخذت حتى يؤدي أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear respective brothers, sisters and youngsters We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every ni'mat and every favor which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most important is that, that of deen al-Islam. Our deen al-Islam it is a complete way of life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenukum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum islam adina that today I have completed unto you my favor. I have completed my favors unto you. This deen, al-Islam, it is a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenukum. Today I have completed your deen. I have completed your way of life. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenukum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati. And I have completed my favors unto you. Deen in itself, it is a favor from Allah. Wa raditu lakum islam adina. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with Islam as our way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with Islam as our way of life. And this deen of Islam covers every aspect of our lives. Because it is deen, it is a way of life. Unlike any other religion, it may not cover certain aspects of life, but Islam covers every aspect of our lives. How we should speak, how we should live, how we should do business, every aspect. So much so that the scholars, they have mentioned that deen has been divided into three parts. Ibadat, Mu'amalat, and Mu'asharat. With regards to our ibadah, how we should worship Allah, falling under that umbrella will be our salah, our belief as Muslims, our salah, zakah, hajj, fasting in the month of Ramadan, giving our zakah. These are ibadat. Then there are the Mu'amalat and the Mu'asharat. With regards to our dealings, our financial dealings, how we do business, how we transact business. And then there's the aspect of our social dealings, how we interact with people, how we treat our neighbors, how we treat the youngsters, how we treat the elders. Islam has covered every aspect of our lives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the Quran as hudallil muttaqeen, as a guidance for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because those people who really want to get guidance from the Quran, whenever they hear the words of Allah, they try to implement it into their lives. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Quran how it is we should do things. And that which one of the things that He has mentioned, which I would like to speak on today, is concerning dain, debt. Debt. And when I say debt, I do not refer to the dying or the passing away of a person. I'm not speaking to, about that, D-E-A-T-H. I'm not speaking about that, that. What I'm speaking about is D-E-B-T. When you take a loan from someone and you have to pay him back, taking that loan, that, that debt, it is very important as Muslims that we understand it in, it, its importance. Because many times as Muslims, we take a loan from someone, we take a loan, and for some reason or the other, we do not repay this loan. But the Sharia has understood, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands that as human beings, as humans living on the face of this earth, we will have necessities. We will have needs. And a person, financially, he may have a need. He may want something. He may not have the money for it. He may not have anything to barter in exchange for it. So Islam has allowed taking a loan. That is why Islam is a complete way of life. Because it has considered that a person don't have and he needs. So it is very important that we understand that taking a loan, it is not just because I want to take a loan or because there is the availability of loan so I will take a loan. No. But a loan should be taken on the basis of necessity. It is a need. A person has a need. There is no other way that he can fulfill that need than he take a loan to fulfill that need. But when that loan is taken, some of the scholars even mention that taking a loan should be out of necessity, meaning that it should not be done out of a pleasure. A person just wants to take a trip, a vacation, he takes a loan. Some scholars have even went so far that it should be taken out of a need. Because the Rasul also took a loan. But his loan that he took, it is mentioned that the Rasul wasallam. Before he passed away, he took a loan from a Jew, a Yahud, of some barley. I think it was 80 wasak or 30 wasak, I cannot remember the amount. So when he took the loan of this barley because he had a need for the family, his family did not have food, so he took this barley. What did he did? He took barley. Because his family did not have food. And this was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in exchange of it, in lieu of that loan that he took, he left his shield as a collateral or as a security. So that in case anything, he wasn't able to pay back the loan, then the Jew was able to took the, take the shield. However, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he passed away. He was not able to pay that loan, so the Jew, in his possession, was the shield of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is jaiz and this is permissible. So, loan. Many times we take a loan but we don't pay it back. And this is very frightening. That when it is that we take a loan, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive each and every sin. Each and every sin is forgiven. Except in debt. If a person... Associate parties with Allah and he makes sincere tawbah and he asks forgiveness from Allah, Allah will forgive him. If a person he fornicates, he adulterates, and he seeks sincere tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, Allah will forgive him. He's our Rahman and Rahim. But if a man takes a loan and he does not pay it back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive him because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not take it upon himself to intercede between two servants. Because taking a loan, you have taken a right from a Muslim. And when you have taken that loan, even if that loan that you have taken is from a non-Muslim, on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, if that person did not forgive you for that loan, then on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when you stand before Allah, that person will say, Oh Allah, He owed me. He owed me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ahkamul Hakimin, the just of all judges. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes justice. So what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? If it is that, let's say for instance, whether he's a Muslim or he's a non-Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him justice. Allah will give him justice. And you will have to repay that person. But in Maidan al-Hashar, on that plane, when you stand before Allah, 
Would you have any, possessor, any of your possessions with you? Would you have gold and silver with you? Would you have your bank account with you? Would you have your checkbook with you? No. As a matter of fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us, he says, when a person, he's risen on the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah, he, he will be risen in front of Allah the day as, just as how he has born, when he was born. Naked. No possessions. The only thing that you will possess is your deeds. Your amals. If it is your good deeds or your bad deeds, that is all you will have in your possession. That is all you will have in your possession. And what will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? In order to fulfill that right of that individual, Allah will take your good deeds to repay him, even if he's an unbeliever. Allah will repay him with your good deeds. So that is what is frightening. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he says, in explaining this, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa give the example of a shaheed, a person who fought in the path of Allah. For every sin that he commits, even before his blood touches the ground, his sins are forgiven except in debt except in the money that he owes if he does not clear it up in this world then on the day of Yawm al Qiyam, he will have to take care of that that is why it is very important that even when we are dying before we die and we know we owe someone leave it as a will or instruct those who are given that responsibility to distribute our, in, our inheritance that they have to pay off that loan. And the Sharia has given such an emphasis on paying off the loan that even before the inheritors inherit, the money or the loan that he has must be paid. Even if the loan has to be paid and burying and shrouding should, is, is not taken care of, the loan should be paid. The state will take care of his burial and shrouding. Someone, his family, his inheritors will take care of burial and shrouding. His loan has to be paid. That is why it is very frightening. And many a times as Muslims, we do not like to repay loan. We do not like to repay loan. Because of many things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a guideline in the Quran how we should go about in taking loans. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhal amanu, O you who believe, Ida tadayantum bidainin, Whenever you want to take a loan, Whenever you have to take a loan for some valid reason, when you have, a take, when you have to take a loan, إِلَىٰ أَجْلٍ مُسَمَّى to an appointed time. So you tell a person, I would like to borrow such and such money for, and I will pay you back in the next two months. Sometimes we take it for granted, okay, he will pay me back in the next two months. And because of this, at the time when the two months is up, at the end of the two, month, the two months, and you go to him and you say, where's my money? He says, well, give me the next three months. And after three months, you say, okay. It goes, it goes on until a year. Then the next two years, the person never gets his money back. Or sometimes, you go to him after two months and he will tell you, well, you only owe me. You, you lend him 2,000 and he says, I only owe you 1,000. Or I only, I only owe you 1,500. Or you are making a claim that I lend you 2500 What is the evidence of that? What is the evidence? There is absolutely no evidence. Because he came to you, he asked you for a loan, you hand it in his hands. That's it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a guideline. How we should deal with these problems. Because this caused enmity. It caused hatred. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, Whenever you want to take a loan, ila ajalim musamma tan appointed time, faktubuhu, then write it. This is one aspect that as Muslims we negate. Sometimes we say, well, I know him. He's my friend. Or sometimes we say, that is small money, but you're looking back for it. Then if we are expecting to get that money back, then let us follow the guidelines which have been given to us in the Quran. Faktubuhu, then write it down. Write it down. And what is very important also is that in writing it down, it will be a reminder for that person who is taking the loan that he says, listen, I have to pay that loan because it is documented, it is black and white. So he will remember that, listen, I have to pay that loan. Secondly, it will remove any form of dispute because it is written. Any form of dispute is, is removed. 
And when this loan is written, who should dictate what is written? The person who's taking the loan. So if I take the loan, I should say, listen, I so-and-so has agreed, I have taken a loan from so-and-so and has agreed to pay off at the end of so-and-so time. I should dictate and he will agree to it. Yes, this is what we have agreed to. So I should dictate. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, the instruction which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. The next aspect of taking a loan which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned to us which is very important. And this ayat is one of the longest ayat in the Holy Quran. Ayat 282 in Surah Baqarah which mentioned about the loan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَاسْتَشْهِدُوا شَهِيدَيْنِ Take two witnesses. Appoint two witnesses. Memory Jali come from amongst your men. Based on this, the commentators and the Mufassirin, they have mentioned that when we are using our witnesses, they should be only Muslims. In this transaction, our witnesses should be Muslims. Because why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Memory Jali come from the men from amongst you. يكون, and if you cannot find two men, if you cannot find them, if there is not two men from amongst you, then Rajulaini. So if you cannot find two men, Rajulaini, for Rajulun Wahidun, sorry, for Rajulun, then let there be one man, Wamuraatan, and two women. So in place of that other man, you will take two women as, mus as witnesses, two Muslim women. Because they also can act as witnesses. So we may ask, how come two women? Why it is not one woman? Once in the time of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he mentioned this, one of the companions from amongst the women, and just to look at the adab and the etiquette of the women of, the, of that time, the companions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she turned to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a very respectable way. She did not disgrace the Rasul. She says, Oh Rasul Allah, could you please explain to us why it is that two women, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explains to her. He says, sorry, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was addressing the women. He was addressing the women. And whilst addressing the women, he told them, he says that, O oh, gathering of women, you should make a lot of istighfar and you should give a lot of charity. Do a lot of istighfar and give a lot of charity. He says, because I see many of you, I see many of you as the companions of the fire. Majority of the, the companions or the people of the fire of Jahannam will be women. So he says, I see many of you as the companions of the fire. So one of the women, in a respectable way, she got up and she says, well, I didn't, the hadith didn't mention she got up, but she said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, why is it that the women will be, majority of them will be in the fire of Jahannam? He says, because, one, they curse a lot. They curse their spouses a lot. Two, is that along with cursing, they do not show appreciation. They do not show appreciation for that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them. You know, they complain, basically. So he said that I have never seen people who are more, who are defective, who are shortcoming in mind, who have control over those who are more sound in mind. I have never seen those who have shortcoming in their mind take control over those who are more sound in mind. Referring, he has never seen where women have more control over men. That is what he was explaining. So then the companion, she, they, she asks, she says, Ya Rasulullah, what do you mean by women? They are 
um, with regards to the fact that shortcoming in mind and in and deen and religion. He says, as to regards the shortcoming in mind, the reason why there's in shortcoming in mind is because for every for every two for every one male witness, you have to get two female witnesses. So that in case she forgets, she will remind the other. In case one of them forgets, she will remind the other. And with regards to the shortcoming of religion, is that he mentions that there are times together where she will not pray, nor will not fast, and that was because of the fact of high than the fast as the case may be. So he explained to her in a very simple way why it is that he mentioned they are shortcoming in mind. It is not that they are stupid, but the reason is because of them, the fact of being witnesses. And they may remind one another. And with regards to deen, it is where there are certain times that a woman is, you know, she's allowed to, you know, forgo salah because of the fact she's in haid or nifas and fasting also in the month of Ramadan. So this shows that women can act as witnesses, but they must be two in place of one man. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, if there isn't from amongst you two men, then for rajulun let there be one man and two women. The other aspect of death, which is very important, the last aspect, which it is practiced today, but sometimes we overlook it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ If you are on a journey, وَلَمْ تَجِدُوا كَاتِبًا And you do not find a katib. You do not find someone who can write your transaction or your agreement or your contract with regards to taking a loan. And the Mufassirin, they have mentioned this can refer to many things. It can refer to the fact that there isn't anyone who is, has the ability to write out that contract for you because no one has the ability to write. They also mention it refers to if no one has pen and paper, right? A person is taking a loan, but there's no pen, there's no paper, people are traveling. There's no means of getting pen and paper. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَرِهَانٌ مَقْبُوذَ Then let, let there be something that is given in lieu, or as what we call something that is given as a, as a, a guarantee, something that is given uh, as a security for paying that loan. Or what we know as collateral, let something be given as a collateral to safeguard that loan. So sometimes it happens that a person takes a loan and he has something of possession, something that has a wealth, it has, you know, value. Then when taking that loan, he can say, listen, you hold this. And hold this until I repay the loan, then you will give it to me. Which will act as a collateral. But it is very important that we understand that if something is given to you as to hold as a collateral or security, you cannot you cannot derive benefit from it. Give you an example. Let's say for instance someone took a loan and he used his house as a collateral or he used his car as a collateral and it is, it is in his possession, the person who he took the loan. They have the, the car or they have the house. That person who, lo who gave him that loan who is holding that collateral, that car or that house cannot derive benefit, direct benefit from it. And if benefit is derived, then he has to give it to the original owner. Understand that very carefully. So if he gets benefit, if let's say for instance he rents out the house, then the rent from that house must be given back to the original owner, the person who took the loan. You cannot get benefit from it. Because if you do that, then that also will amount to riba. That will amount to riba. Because you are lending him a loan, he gives you something in as a collateral to hold as security, but at the same time you're getting benefit from that. If you do that, then that will consider to be considered as riba. So, my dear respective brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made deen very simple for us and very clear for us. If it is that when we are giving loans, or if when we are taking loan, we want to safeguard ourselves, we want to safeguard our honor. 
then let us follow the commandments given by us to, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us follow the instructions given to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the first of which is that whenever you're taking a loan, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, إِذَا تَدَايَنْتُمْ بِدَيْنٍ Whenever you take a loan, إِلَىٰ أَجْلٍ مُسَمَّى To an appointed time, فَاكْتُبُوهُ Then write it. The first thing, write it. Take it down. Not only that, but also you should try to have witnesses. وَاسْتَشْهِدُوا شَهِيدَيْنِ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ And then get two witnesses from amongst your men. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُونَا And if you do not find two men, رَجُلَيْنِ If you do not find two men, then فَرَجُلٌ وَمْرَأَتَانِ Then let there be a man and two women. And the third thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has explained to us, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ If you are on a journey, وَلَمْ تَجِدُوا كَاتِبًا And you do not find a katib, you do not find a scribe and a writer, فَرِيْهَانٌ مَقْبُوثًا Then let there be something in lieu, let there be something that is given as a collateral in exchange for that loan. Inshallah, if we follow these guidelines, inshallah, things will be made easy for us. Now, on the other hand, if for some reason, a person do not want to follow these guidelines, and he decides that he will give a loan without following it, there is no harm in it. But whatever happens, then you must also be willing to take the consequences. If the person decides he doesn't want to pay, then that is between you, him and Allah. If a person says, well, this is my good friend and he's just borrowing a, a small amount of money and I will just give it to you. If you don't pay back, well, you don't pay back and he does that, then that is between you, him and Allah. Right? So my dear respective brothers and sisters, we should be very careful about the loans, taking loans. Because Allah, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith, he says, Ala al-yadi ma akhadat hatta yu'addiyahu that the hand of the debtor will carry the burden of what it took until he gives it back. And that is very frightening. That the hands of the debtor will carry that burden, and debt in itself is a burden, will carry that burden until what he took, he gives it back. So I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the tawfiq inshallah, where we will try as much as possible to follow deen because only way if we follow deen then we'll be successful wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin it's the greatest gift from allah to be in the last prophet summa salatullah wa salamullah ala al-hadi ar-rasulillah it's the greatest gift from allah to be in the last prophet summa salatullah wa salamullah ala al-hadi ar-rasulillah what can be said of mustaq